All right, so in this video, we have a 2011 13 inch MacBook Air. I believe this is the A1369 model. And the problem is the trackpad, when the owner was trying to install macOS, the macOS installation kept randomly crashing and dying and in the middle of it, it crapped out. The problem is their trackpad and their keyboard weren't working. So I did some troubleshooting and found that the trackpad cable is bad. And on these, and I replaced the trackpad cable. So the trackpad started working, but then there's a few keys over here on the keyboard that don't respond to pushes or anything and so I tried a new keyboard just the keyboard itself and it works so I know the logic board is fine the problem is this keyboard has gone bad for whatever reason it's from 2011 so it's nine years old been millions of or hundreds of thousands of button presses and so it no longer works but I'm gonna show you instead of my the customer brought me a top case unit so <clears throat> so the bottom chassis part of the board the trackpad and the keyboard they brought me a whole unit I can replace just the keyboard but they already had a replacement top case so they just want me to replace that so this video I'm going to show you how to replace the top case on your 13 inch MacBook Air this is a 2011. This goes for 2011 all the way up to 2017. There are like 2008, 9, 10 models, I believe, of MacBook Airs. I haven't worked on them, so I do not know, but I believe it's the same procedure. I'm going to go ahead and show you the tools you need as we go along, the screws and the sizes. So if you're new to this and you wanted to, or an owner and you wanted to take this repair on, I will show you step by step how to accomplish this on your own with this video of course so let's get to it first thing we have to do flip the computer over you're gonna need a p5 pen load driver on the bottom there are 10 screws on the bottom of the case. There are eight P5 pen lobes that are 2.6 millimeters in length. That's this one, this one, this one. Basically all of them except for these two back ones where the black clutch cover is. These are P5 still but they are nine millimeters long and I'll show you. First, we'll take those off to get the bottom cover off. So we'll do that. And I like to keep my other hand. These screws, it's their, when you're unscrewing them or screwing them in, they're easy to slip. So I like to keep my other hand close so you don't scratch the bottom of the case. So you can kind of keep the driver in line. And this is an older computer, so most of the time... The screws will come out on their own, but this one's having trouble because it's older and the bottom case is, or the bottom cover is pretty beat up. So we just take a magnet and get them out that way. A couple of them have trouble. So we'll take these P, P5, Penelope 5 by 2.5 or yeah, 2.5 millimeters in length. Take those out. This is a normally a repair I can do in about 10 to 15 minutes. It's obviously going to take a lot longer because I'm explaining things. So make sure you have coffee. Now we'll take the two panel lobe 5 by 9 millimeter screws out. So those are the longer. Those the longer guys, 
they go in the back. Focus. Anyway, anyway, you get the idea. There we go. Yep, longer. So there's two of those. And a side note, if there are, any of them are stripped, throw them away. Don't put them back because it's very difficult to get. It's very difficult to get the screws out of the bottom once they're stripped. Pull the bottom cover off, set it aside. And now we have the inside of the computer. This is a 2011, so it's got one, two. So, well, the next step is to get a. I've got a P0 here, size Phillips screwdriver. We're going to remove the SSD screw, which is a Phillips. The newer MacBook models, I think from 2012 and up, have a P5, P5 screw. This one happens to be Phillips. So, and it looks like this. It's got a real, a real big head on it, and it's a short. It's a real short screw. So yeah, there's that. And there's two of these in here, there's, and actually the one on the Wi-Fi is in fact a P a P5. And so that is a trying to think of the length. So two and a, it's like two two and a two and a half millimeter, two point nine. Take your and just gently pull your SSD out and you want to pull this way away from the connector. Don't pull up because it'll damage it, so you pull it back like this. Just gently wiggle it back and forth a little bit and it'll and the drive will and the drive will come out this way. So you set that in a safe place. Under these newer or older boards you have you'll have a logic board screw underneath the SSD. The newer ones don't have that from twenty twelve on. I think it's twenty twelve on. So other than that step, the these step these next three steps you can do them in a different any order um, we should probably unhook the battery first that would be smart yeah unhook your battery first don't do what I just did do what I say not what I do unhook the battery we can go ahead and pull the uh, DC inboard flex cable off so you just take your thumbs and pry up comes off and put that to the side We'll go ahead and remove the battery. Now the battery has two different size screws here. So there's one, two, three. Those are T5 by six, roughly six millimeters in length. So we'll remove those. And the center one is slightly wider then the other two, that's how you can tell which one goes in the center of the battery. I'll see if I can show you the difference. So, yeah, you can see. You can see the difference. So that, this screw here is the center one. Because it's wider, you can see it's slightly wider. And there's only one of those, so that's the center battery screw. Probably not a super big deal if you mix them up, but if you're like me, you like to put the correct screws back in the right place. And the next are two T5. These are all T5, by the way. The only penalobe pen screws will be for the bottom cover. So these are Torx 5 by 2.4 millimeter. Those are the other two that go in the front of the battery, towards the front of the case. And then you can go ahead and take your battery out. As we will be transferring the battery to the new top case. 
Now, if you want, you can pull your trackpad cable. There's a, a little uh, latch that you just lift up. And same with on the trackpad. Lift that up, pull it out, set that to the side. You can go ahead and undo your keyboard backlight cable. It's the same thing. There's a little latch. You just flip that up and pull the cable out. And then you have a speak your right speaker is plugged in here. So you want to unhook that. And then you have your LCD connector cable, ribbon cable here down in the bottom. You just pull that latch up. And then once again, you want to pull straight back, straight back this way to unhook the cable. Do not pull up because you can damage the connector. So just take your, I like to take my middle finger and you just kind of take the little bar and you just take it and pull it backwards and it'll come out. All right, and then we'll take your T5, remove your screw from your Wi-Fi card, put that in your organizer. We'll go ahead and unhook the Wi-Fi antennas. You can unhook the Wi-Fi antennas before you take the screw out if it's probably easier. Same thing as the SSD. You want to take your Wi-Fi card and wiggle it and pull straight back. Don't pull up. Actually, that step's not necessary because we don't have to take the Wi-Fi card off because the fact that we're transferring everything to the new case, so we'll go ahead and leave that back on. I'm not editing out any changes or mistakes because I don't have that kind of time. Okay, you want to take your Wi-Fi antenna cable and gently pull it out to the side. And then you have your DC. I'll put the board up here so you can see what I'm talking about. I have your DC in connector here. So you want to pull that out and same deal. You pull that straight to the left. If you have your computer in this orientation, with your fan on the left side, you just pull the cable, the DC and cable, straight to the left. And now we will remove the logic board screws, and these are all T5 by um, let me check. They're T5 by 6 6.3 millimeters. Yeah, so we'll remove those logic board screws. So there's two, three, and then we'll drop one on the floor. There's four, that's why you have a magnetic pickup tool. Where did you go? <laughs> if I had a dollar for every screw that I've dropped on the floor. Where'd you go? to find a uh, capacitor on the floor. <laughs> How about that? Where did that bounce to? Jeez. It bounced behind me, did it? Um, I'm going to go into the desk real quick and see if I can find it. Where did you go? Gotcha. And of course, my coax cables doesn't want to cooperate.
All right, I found it. Haha. <laughs> Where were we? Okay. <laughs> Next screw. Here's number five and number six. Put those in our little organizer so we don't lose anything. Now there should be a DC inboard screw, but it's gone. Next, we will remove our uh, fan screws, and we're missing a fan screw here too. Not quite sure who worked on this computer before me. Um, they lost, they've lost a couple of screws that we'll probably uh, replace. <laughs> So that is a three a T five by three point six. And on this, I'm gonna put this screw back. And you'll be able to tell which screw this is because it's got a kind of a thicker thicker head to it. I don't know if you can see that or not. Yeah, you can see it's got a thicker head on it. So that screw goes there, and that's the thick T5 by 3.6 and then usually the screw in this position right here that's missing where the fan is that is a T5 by 3.6 with a short head but it's missing and then the last the last screw which is the important one that you don't want to ever mix up is this one the little one that put that screws into the logic board here that standoff is actually soldered onto the logic board and that is a 2.7 millimeter screw and if you put a 3.6 millimeter screw in there you're gonna pop that you're gonna pop that uh, screw standoff off the board and you may even damage your logic board so we can pull the fan out and now the logic board is ready to come out. So you just gently lift up. You want to clear your cable, your speaker cable, because that usually holds it in, and you just gently pull up. And that is it. And the board is out. Sorry, I'm see I see a little bit of liquid. Looks like damage here, and there's some sticky stuff over here. All right, and we'll go ahead and set the logic board aside. And chances are your top case, your new top case is not going to come with a DC inboard, so you want to pull your speaker cable out. And then you have a microphone connector. Do you want to pop out of there too gently and then you have your camera cable this is a 2011 so the camera cable is on the DC inboard right here if I can get that in there so you want to be careful of this of this connector too when you're pulling it out you want to you want to pull straight back on it I like to use tweezers and and kind of rock it out um, with my other hand so it gently comes out because those are easy to rip and they're hard to replace so then we take your DC inboard out normally there's a screw in your DC inboard but in this case there's not one and then we're gonna go ahead and take the trackpad out of this too because I'm curious the new top case did not or did come with the trackpad but I'm not sure if it's good or not so we're gonna we're gonna try actually you know what we'll try the we'll try the trackpad that came with the top case to see if it works because we have not only do we have the top case or the trackpad that came with the replacement top case but we got a new trackpad as well so our odds of having one working trackpad is pretty good 
And to get the, the trackpad screws out here, you want to use a Phillips, like a P00, is what I like to use. We're just going to borrow this... Um, borrow the screws out of this for our new trackpad because this top case doesn't need a trackpad anymore because the keyboards are no good. Now, I may recycle it. I may take the old keyboard out, put a new replacement keyboard in. And oh no, we have a stripped screw. That's not good. So we may, may have to go to plan B. All right, we're going to open it up so we're not pushing on the screen. We're going to go ahead and open up the computer. Oops. So we're not pushing on the screen, and I'm pushing on my transmitter. I don't want to do that and turn it off or ruin the cord or something. So Sometimes you can use you can use a lot of pressure and coax that coax that screw out of there what's going on with my wireless otherwise you'll have to I'll have to do a different method. There's a flathead. Nope. All right. We're going to use the wire cutter method really quick. Let's see if we can't get that screw out of there. Because we're not going to leave this trackpad in this top case. We're going to take it. Screw be darned. If you apply the right amount of pressure, just gently turn it. Ah, got it. Should be able to just turn that screw out of there. And done. Yeah, and you're going in the trash. Ah. We've got other ones. And we'll go ahead and unhook. Oh, the key keyboard's already unhooked. That's right, because I unhooked it. So we'll take this trackpad. Now... We're going to remove the speakers. These speakers are only held in by strips of adhesive tape, double-sided adhesive tape. So you can grab on this big end and just gently work around and gently pull. And if it feels like the speaker is going to break, the speaker itself is right here. This is just like an audio tube. You can take something like a metal spudger or something and you can kind of work it under there and kind of pry up a little bit as you're lifting. And don't worry if you break these speakers, they're incredibly inexpensive to replace new, I mean used. So then you just pop it out and soon you can see this, the speaker itself is here. So we'll just set that to the side because our top case didn't come with speakers. Some of them do. Same, we'll go with the left side here. Just gently put the pry tool of your choice underneath the speaker and just gently lift up. like that most of the time it leaves the adhesive intact so so there's that and now you're going to need a t8 I believe this is a t8 yep you're going to need a t8 screwdriver and you have six t8 screws for the screen for the LCD panel so there's three there 
you can see them three there and three on the other side so you would just unscrew those and we'll go ahead and put those to the side in our in our little organizer box I have all the screws memorized I just I like keeping everything organized so it's much easier to put the thing back together you don't have to sit and hunt for screws you can just go into which compartment has the screws you need and that's it we're going to be taking the LCD of course Now, it might be a little easier to have the computer open before you remove all the screws, but I've done this a lot, so you just gently turn the hinges, and there goes our old top case. And now, we'll bring the new top case in. This one looks much nicer. Yeah, see there's no speakers or anything in it, no trackpad. So we'll go ahead. Ooh, that hinge is quite loose. You know what, I think we're going to pop this clutch cover off because this hinge is pretty loose and I don't want to give this back to the customer with a loose, with a loose hinge. So to remove a clutch cover, you, can, you push it to the right, You just it's the black piece of plastic, you just push it hard to the right, and then it should come off fairly, fairly easy, just like that. I see these things get broken a lot, and it's because technicians, or people who fix MacBooks, they just take screwdrivers and like rip these things off or pry them off, but you don't do that, you just push it to the left, it's got locking tabs. Anyway, I digress. So we're going to go ahead and tighten this hinge. Sorry, it's. I know this was just a top case swap. These are T8 screws, by the way. There's three of them. If you ever need to tighten a hinge on your LCD panel. Yeah, we'll go ahead and tighten that for the customer so they don't, they don't have loose hinges. That's no good. Yeah, see, we go the extra mile here. Optimize logic pair. Hand tighten those gently, and then you want to put your clutch cover, slide your clutch cover back on. This is very thin plastic, so you got to be very careful. And then you want to just push it on as close to the right hinge as possible, like that. Just hold it down, and you just slide to the left, and that's it. That easy. There's no need to take screwdrivers and pry on a clutch cover and break it and everything. You don't need tools to take this clutch cover off. If you need tools to take this clutch cover off, you're doing it wrong. All you need is your brain. That's the only tool you need. All right, back to the repair. So we are going to take our new bottom, our top case, sorry. Now you can populate this first if you want. There's no order of operations that has to be followed, but some people find it easier to do it one way, some the other, and this is the way I'm doing it. And I'm not going to tighten the screen all the way down because once we get it loaded up, we'll align the screen perfectly using our eyes. This, these two screws are just to hold the screen on while we work. These things can be can be buggers. So we'll just gently tighten up two screws here. We're just doing this for now until we get everything installed. And on the left side hinge, if you want to put a screen screw in the furthest hole to the left, because the two right holes, they have a bracket that holds your Wi-Fi antenna down. And I find it easier to, to align this screen with that screw only than it is those two because as soon as you start tightening those down the the little bracket wants to move move the hinge around and it's a pain to get it lined up 
So, all right, now we'll put our, we'll in, reinstall our speakers. So it's just the reverse of ripping them out. There's a peg you line it up on, then you just kind of push down. Yep, just like that. And take your right speaker. Sometimes if the adhesive on the bottom is real torn up, I'll just rip, I'll just clean it off and put a new piece of clear double-sided tape. But this is about 80% intact, so that's more than enough. These speakers weigh like nothing. All right. You just put this other speaker down. Gently f press down on it to kind of keep it in place. Okay. And now, if you want, we can replace our trackpad. I'll go ahead and do that. It's kind of an extra step since, um, you know what, that trackpad doesn't look that great. So maybe we'll try this one instead. <laughs> so take the front and you want to slide it under there and then you just let it fall. It should just slide in there and we'll take our double zero Phillips screwdriver, take a couple of our tiny little trackpad bracket screws. And then I just put them in two holes like that, as you can see, just to kind of hold the trackpad in place while I test. I'm not super very, I'm not really superstitious, but I believe that if you, my luck, I always put all the screws back into one of these computers and something doesn't work. So I always tend to just put one screw for now to hold it in. See, those are little Phillips screws. I just put two of them in for now to hold it in and I can test. And then if by some chance the trackpad doesn't work, I'm not unscrewing six screws. I'm only unscrewing two. It's just an efficiency thing. And then we'll go ahead and blindly stick our keyboard flex into the thing and push the clutch or the clasp down whatever you want to call it all right and then we can take our DC in board and we'll put that back all right so let's make sure we have all of our cables. So we got our sp speaker cable. Wait, where's our microphone cable? Shoot. Do we not have a microphone in here? Hold on a minute. Oh, we got to pull the speaker back out. Should be another cable over here. If it covered it up, or if it's not in here. Well, I'll be darned. <laughs> we don't have a microphone. Wow. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we're going to have to take the microphone out of this. interesting is that double sided tape or is that mm. okay I guess we're going to have to double sided tape the microphone back into here <laughs> I 
the microphone's missing. All right, well, that's unfortunate. <clears throat> Kind of some extra steps, but that's all right. As long as the end result is a working computer. Take some double-sided adhesive. This is some real good stuff, and put it there on the microphone put it on both sides I want to put it over the microphone or it's not going to work and this adhesive is super sticky come on We'll make sure to test this microphone when we're done to make sure, doubly make sure it works. Microphone's good and stuck, and we're gonna put this plastic back on the on there too. Put that tape that back on. I don't think that was supposed to come off. But we're gonna go ahead and put that back on too. Haha, <laughs> that's funny. Of course, I'm making a video, so everything is gonna misbehave. My adhesive stuck to my shirt. Go ahead and use our tweezers. This thing's pretty small. All right. So that is now back on there where it should be. All right, now we're back. We can pick up where we left off here. So, we can now put our speaker back. Right next to our microphone. Perfect. All right. That's what we were missing. <laughs> Let me just transfer the microphone over. Okay. So now the microphone gets plugged into the first thing and we're going to tuck that cable underneath the speaker cable that goes to the back of the DC inboard. I'll show you a close-up of that once I get that done. We'll plug the camera cable in and stuff after we line up the um, screen. I'll show you what I mean. So the microphone cable See if I can show you. Focus. Yeah, the microphone cable goes goes underneath the speaker cable. So this is the speaker cable, and then the microphone cable gets tucked in this little channel underneath the speaker cable. 
So that speaker cable goes all the way back to the back of the DC inboard. So make sure you put that over the microphone speaker or cable, excuse me. All right now we can put our logic board back in because we can adjust our we can adjust our screen screws with the logic board inside the computer. Okay. Make sure your um, make sure your backlight, your keyboard backlight, flexes out from under the board before you screw it down. You can go ahead and plug your right speaker back in, and then line the board up on those screw holes, and then you take your your T5 logic board screws. I like to just put a couple in to kind of hold the board in place while we do everything else. Let's put one down there. Um, put one over here. That just kind of holds it and everything in place. There are actually a few screws missing out of this MacBook. Nothing irritates me more than somebody who doesn't put screws back. Even the... There's a screw missing here too. Now I've got tons of MacBook Air screws, so I am going to be a good technician and put all the screws that are missing into this board. So we got one DC inboard screw. You can tell the DC inboard screws on these MacBooks. They have red Loctite uh, lead or red Loctite on them to where all the other screws have blue. This is my experience from opening up a brand new MacBook Air. Okay. We'll go ahead and put our fan in. Put our two uh, fan screws in. Make sure we line up the holes. And then there's a, another screw that is missing. It's the end screw for the heat sink. Go ahead and replace that. Place our camera cable back in since our screen is going to move too far. All right. Oh, we're missing a, one fan screw. I have bags of screws, so I will not hesitate to put a screw in if I have it. is finding the right one. That right one is you. All right. Oopsie. We got an escapee. Get back in there. 
Everything's good and tight. Go ahead and put our DC and jack back in and our DC and cable. Like that. We can go ahead and hook up our trackpad cable. And I'm going to power this computer up from my DC power supply and not the battery. Because, like I said, I want to check the keyboard and the trackpad to make sure everything works before I put the battery back in and all the screws. Because it's a tremendous waste of time if you put this whole entire computer back together and the, the keyboard wants to malfunction. Go ahead and put the logic board screws in. Because I'm putting the logic board back in all the way. Because if the keyboard's bad, then I'm going to stop this video. And I'll have to talk to my customer to see if they want to do a keyboard replacement. But Alright. Do our LCD. Or you know what? Let's align the screen real quick. So I'm gonna what I'm gonna do is loosen loosen these two screws up like a three quarters of a turn just so they're loose. To a full turn. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sight down I'm gonna sight down the side of the iPad and use my fingers to make sure there's no lip. And I can generally do this within about 25 seconds because I've done this hundreds of times so I can usually get it quickly so that looks good yep so everything's straight and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to pinch down on the front just slightly and then I'm just going to gently Put just a little tiny bit of pressure on these screws. Don't torque them down because you'll move the screen even though you're pinching down on it. Just like see like that moved ever so slightly. So then we'll double check it again. It looks nice. Nice and straight. See so yeah, I'll show you. You can look down. You can sight down it and see. That the screen screen and the top case are not offset they're perfectly in line with each other focus just once please anyway you get the picture and now that that's all it takes to line this line the screen up well and then the rest of the screen screws you can put in and I do not recommend once you tighten them down to where they're given resistance I'd give them like another eighth a turn because these screws are very brittle and they're going into aluminum and they will break and if they break you have to drill them out and that is a royal pain so yeah I just give them like a little little tiny turn after they start making or start resisting so you do not want to go any further than that I mean, you can start feeling, feeling them give. We'll put our Wi-Fi antenna and our bracket back over here with the other T8, the other two T8 screen screws, or hinge screws. Sorry, I call them screen screws, but they're hinge screws. So I'll just start those two, and then I'll gently. Gently snug those down as well while trying to keep that bracket straight. I mean, you're never going to get it perfectly straight. It's I've sat here hundreds of times trying to loosen the screw, tighten the screw, loosen the screw, tighten the screw, just to keep that bracket straight. And it's a pain. All right, and that's it for that. Go ahead and plug our LCD back in. I'm not going to worry about the Wi-Fi antenna right now either. I want to do some testing. 
and just make sure that the actual trackpad and keyboard work or else like I said what are we wasting our time for and due to due to um, due to security constraints I'm going to use an external SSD to power this computer on so that way the customer's information is safe and I don't have to worry about editing the video later so we're going to switch on our power supply here move our battery move our box of screws over here and this is a MagSafe 1 I believe since it's 2011 let's plug in our power supply or our charge cord here to our power supply and we're also gonna plug in our USB Now you can do this part of one of two ways. You can put the bottom back on and flip the computer over, or you can just kind of lean it, lean it up on something. I tend to do that. All right. So we're gonna go ahead and power this on. We've got a green light and a fan spin. We've got a chime. Let's see if it finds an actual a boot a boot partition on its own or if we have to find it for it. Can you give me a flashing question mark folder or are you going to find you mean Apple logo? Oh, give me a prohibited sign. All right, let's try this again. So we'll boot it again and hold Option down. <laughs> Oh, my nose, my nose itches. There we go. Okay. Let's boot into High Sierra. So our trackpad is working. That's good. There we go. Trackpad's working now. If we've got a working keyboard, we can and reinstall our SSD and our battery and wipe down the screen and the outside of the computer and this thing will be ready to go back to its owner I doesn't have a battery in it so it's gonna take forever to boot excuse me nose itches yeah this is gonna it's gonna take its sweet time because it there's no battery in. oh there we go all right well there's our logo or there's our screen so we're gonna go ahead and Put in our password to our generic SSD here. Oh, the hinges on this screen are pretty loose. <laughs> I'm going to try to point the screen up to the camera so you can see me typing. and Because I'm concerned about this area was not working last time. I should have plugged the Wi-Fi card in so I can use Siri to make sure the microphone works. Does the camera work? Look 
What was that noise? You gonna recognize it or what? Holy moly. Oh, there's our um our notepad popped up. Well, that's good. Hey, there's our FaceTime. Uh, hey. Working camera. Goody. So camera works. Let's try the keyboard. So we're going to try every single key, so... Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, zero, minus, equals, delete, Q, W, E, R, T, Y, U, I, O, P. And these keys were not working last time, and they are working now. So we got our slash, our forward slash, our, our um, apostrophe, semicolon, L. K H G F D S A. Wait, let's try that again. <laughs> Something skip. L K J H G F D A S. Z X C W R V B N M. Comma. Period forward slash yeah, the other one was backslash dork Let's see up and down computer is now thinking about it let's not think too hard I do have to go to bed at some point so our arrow keys are working shift do some shift yep those work Excuse me for a second. Oops. I'm running over. I'm running over batteries and stuff. Alright, so caps works. Does caps lock work? Caps locks works? Great. How about control? Okay, let's try our function keys. F1, screen brightness up and down. So that functions. Our Windows key. We only got one window, so our desktop key, yeah. So that works. Okay, that works. Our keyboard backlight because our sensor is seeing light. Okay, so our keyboard backlight's working. Whoa. Is that auto dim? Interesting. Oh. All right. Oh, let's go. Mute. Volume down, volume up. Okay, we don't want to work with iTunes right now. Check our sensors. See if the sensors are working on the trackpad. Yep, we're registering sensor all of our temperatures. We're looking good. We don't have any wacky readings like minus 129 Celsius. So yeah, the trackpad definitely works. We'll go ahead and close hardware monitor.
Yeah. So I think this is a completed job. So now we are going to shut the computer down and finish our installation of our trackpad screws. So we'll go ahead and shut it down because it's now a working machine. And I'll definitely got a screen wipe here. Definitely install the SSD or the Wi-Fi rather and make sure Wi-Fi works and the microphone works. In fact, I should probably check that. Wipe this screen off. There's a lot of the anti-reflective coating is coming off of the screen. A lot of people in the repair community call it Stingate. I simply call it annoying and ugly. <laughs> All right, clean the screen off a little bit. Right, so I'm gonna go ahead and power the power supply off, and we'll we'll go ahead and put the rest of the screws back in here. go ahead and put our Wi-Fi antenna in the channel that belongs in. Unfortunately, I don't have, there is a rubber gasket that's missing that goes over the heat sink. I don't have one, so I can't replace it. That's unfortunate, because I would like to. Because it helps keep helps keep the antenna wire in this channel that it belongs in. Otherwise, this the Wi-Fi antenna wants to wander. Go back in there. Back in your hole there. You silly Wi-Fi cable. Put the Wi-Fi cable in the channel. Got to wrap it around the screw standoff for the bottom cover. And then we'll plug our Wi-Fi antennas in, and we'll make sure Siri and make sure the microphone we installed works. So we definitely don't want to be giving the computer back to our customer if without working Wi-Fi or microphone. There's a little channel that the antenna wires go into. If you don't put them in there, they will get pinched by the bottom cover and you will lose Wi Fi reception. stay now I say we go ahead and install our battery since we've got everything else in and we know we know for a fact that our Q 
keyboard and trackpad installation worked. Successful. We'll take our center screw and put that in first. Like I said, I know I'm looking at OBS. I'm looking at the timer and it says an hour and five minutes. But I can usually do this in about 15 to 20 minutes on a good day. That entire process you saw, I mean, minus the minus the little sidebars of moving the mic or yeah, moving the microphone, moving the speakers and everything, just the logic board, battery, screen, trackpad. Usually 15, 20 minutes tops. You also want to be gentle when you screw these battery screws in because these tabs that are in the battery they're made of cheap plastic and if you put too much torque on them they will split and become useless. Alright, so we'll plug in our battery. Make sure it's plugged in all the way. We'll go ahead and take the customer's SSD and put it back in. When I turn the computer back on I'll once again, I'll use my external drive so we can keep their data safe. Keep forgetting that this SSD screw is a Phillips. Normally, they're a, tor a T5 Torx. All right. Now, put the bottom cover back on. So we've got all of our screws. Only thing we have left, yep, is our bottom cover screws. So once again, we'll just... Oh, we need our penalum, our P5. Once again, we'll just go ahead and put two screws in the bottom and flip it over and try it. Make sure the Wi-Fi is working and the and the microphone. We'll just use. We'll talk to Siri and see see if that's working. Hopefully, their battery has a charge. Okay. Gently flip it over here. We'll start it up. Hold our option key down. We don't need this. Oh, look at that sticker. Left residue on there. Shame. We'll go ahead and clean that off for them, too. All right. So we're going to boot into our Mac OS High Sierra again. See what I'm doing here. We'll turn the we'll turn the volume up so you can hear Siri talking to me, and that'll basically be an indicator if she responds to me that the microphone is in fact working. I would say after that, overall, it was a successful replacement. We'll leave our P5 out because we've got to put the bottom cover back on all the way. We got 56% battery. What I've seen that say. And in order to use Siri, you have to have Wi Fi. We're going to go ahead and plug in the charger. Oh, 84%, so they've got plenty of charge. Okay, they're charging. That works. We don't want to unlock their... All right, let's try Siri. Where's the volume at? Okay. Oh, wait. Hey, Siri, is there football on tonight? The Ravens face the Steelers at 3.40 p.m. Oops, not you. <laughs> my, my laptop said something. You. Can I turn the volume down on this? Yeah. All right, let's try that again. My microphone's still working, but the volume on my computer is up. Let's try that again. Because my, my Siri... Hey Siri, what football is on tonight? The 
The Ravens meet the Steelers at 3.40 p.m. Not you. I wasn't talking to you. I'm talking to this computer. I'm going to get closer. <laughs> what football's on tonight? The Ravens battle the Steelers at 3.40 p.m. There we go. Are you sure about that? Are you sure about that? There's nothing to read. All right. Well, the microphone works, so all right. That's it. Nothing else to do. This computer uh, top case was successfully replaced. Now all I'm gonna all I'll have left to do is to remove this adhesive sticker stuff off here. Put the rest of the screws in the bottom and then send my customer the bill. You don't need to watch me do this. So anyway, that's the end of the video. If you found any of that helpful, give me a thumbs up. If you have any questions, feel free to drop me a question or visit my website at www.optimizelogicrepair.com. We fix all sorts of electronic devices. And we also have computers for sale. So check us out. Anyway, that's it. Thanks for watching.